lot of good responses. And we want it that way because this is not a monologue. <laughs> this is truly a dialogue. And I, uh, I think the Spanish interpreter is on already also. Yes, the Spanish interpreter is there. She's waiting. Yeah, she's, she, she, she did a chat thing. Yeah, Lourdes is there. And um, and why don't we all go in the chat feature and just say hello or tell us who, who's here. I'm just gonna put my name in so we can all kind of know uh, who's here. Because sometimes our, our, our um, our Zoom names aren't our names. <laughs> we want to know. Who. My name really is Queen Kathy. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, I'm looking at iPhone. I know the person there is not iPhone. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I know, I know um, they have a name. So we like to know who's the name <laughs> behind. Hi, Anita Watson King. Good to meet you. Thank you all for coming out. It's good to see the parents showing up. This is good. And um, at some point, hey, uh, Tiffany Anderson, nice to see you. Yeah. Yeah, Tiffany Anderson is here. And um, I want to make sure I get these. Edith is here. Yeah. Tiffany Anderson. Yeah. Hmm. Hi, Danielle Gatson. Glad to have you here. Good to see you. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> okay, a few more folks coming in. Very good. All right, Coach, are you ready to get started? And I was born ready. <laughs> all right, all right. So good evening, everyone. Um, we want to thank you for being here with us. Um, for those who I have not met, my name is Eric Sansell, Program Manager for the Department of Education. For our returning participants, I um, want to welcome you back as well. Uh, we are in our fourth series for our Parent and Family Education Workshops. We are happy to bring back our wonderful presenter, uh, and I'm going to turn the program over to him. All right. Yes. All right, so what I'm gonna do is um, I'm going to mute everyone in a moment. And so, but I do want to just, you know, say welcome. It's good to see you all. And um, I'm, 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 I'll tell you, we've done, this is our fourth month of doing this. And I'm really excited about this topic because I think we all have scenarios and situations with kids where we see emotional responses. <laughs> now. We all know that emotions aren't always negative. They can be positive, but a lot of times as parents, we see the other stuff, <laughs> you know, with our kids and uh, where some of them may have some challenges and attitudes and dispositions. So tonight's information is going to be valuable. It's going to be valuable. Because you're going to learn some insights and skills that's going to be helpful as it relates to managing these emotions. So um, I'm going to now go ahead and mute everyone um, so that we can kind of stop some of that background noise, but there will be times that I'm going to ask you to come off of mute, okay, and, uh, and share your ideas, because like I said, this is, not a, um, <clears throat> this is not a monologue, and none of them ever are, and then another thing I wanted to mention as well is that, you know, one of the things that's really important to us, myself and Eric, is that we, you know, we know we're as parents, we want to motivate parents, so we're here to inspire each other and encourage each other. Our initial goal from day one was to create a communities a practice where parents are inspiring parents because you know it's really interesting people can get together for like financial man management meetings and get to met, met together for this kind you know, all these different kind of meetings but we don't always see people getting together to talk about parenting you know what i mean it's kind of like we don't do this <laughs> you know we talk about everything else you know investment savings community service and things like that when it comes to parenting eh, we don't do that that much but parenting is the foundational building block to everything. And let me explain what I mean. You know, everyone has parents, you know, so now some people unfortunately have situations where they don't, you know, they're adopted or, and they still have parents, you know, but their, you know, birth parents aren't there. But the reality is we all start somewhere with somebody, you know, and, and, and so it shows how powerful that foundational building block is. That's us. You know, my mom is, has dementia now, unfortunately, you know, and uh, is in a nursing home, which I hate her being there, but she has really bad dementia. We can no longer care for her. 
And, you know, it's just, I, I, you know, I, I just, I love my mom. <laughs> you know, my mom was just a good mother. She raised two boys on her own single mom went back to school to get an education and, and, and was just a, a loving woman. So I grew up, you know, every now and then she, I, as a son, she had to pop me on the back of the head because I was one of those little boys. <laughs> but the majority of the time she was hugging and telling me how special I was, even, even though I was somewhat, like, I like to say a lot of things a little too much. <laughs> and I was joking yesterday, I was telling everybody, my mom told me, she used to tell me this all the time. She was really good with words because I was the mouthy one in the family. My brother was the quiet one. I was the mouthy one. And she would say to me, boy, I know one day that mouth was, you're going to use that mouth for something good. <laughs> and that was her nice way of saying, boy, you're talking a whole lot right now and you're driving me crazy, but one day it's going to work. It's, it's, it's going to... So parents play a significant role in our futures. And here I am all these years later using my mouth to make a difference. So she, she helped me lay that foundation. So um, let's dive into the material. We're going to just go smooth sailing. There's no rush. I would encourage y'all to stay the course. I know everybody's busy and got things, but this is not one you want to walk away from. This information will change everything. I mean, it really is. Now, I'm going to say for us, our, our youth, of course, but then also for, um, for, for us as parents. You know what I mean? It just, it's, it's going to be powerful, this topic. And it's research-based, what we're going to talk about, but it's also inspirational what we're gonna be talking about. So I would even encourage you, if you got a friend out there that you know could get a young person in their lives that they may be dealing with some emotional type things, text them and say, hey, you may wanna jump on this because what we're gonna be sharing is some strategies that's gonna be helpful. So this is, you know, this is gonna be, this is gonna be some good information. So let me jump into the presentation. I'm gonna ask you if you can see this okay. Um, let me go back here. Could y'all see it all right? Everybody thumbs up, two thumbs up, put your hands up in the air like you just don't care. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Kathy. <laughs> I need that some music in the background, right? <laughs> and so, um, but as you can see, this handsome guy sitting right here, I can say that about myself if I want to, don't talk about me, <laughs> is uh, who I am, Daryl Andrews, I'm Coach D. You know, I got my beautiful family down here. And um, I've been involved with doing speaking, training and consulting programs now for 20 plus years. Um, I've been all over the country. I've been a keynote speaker for the national PTA, the first non-celebrity man of color to ever do as such. And, um, it was so funny when we went out to Arizona, it was in Phoenix, Arizona. And I had to actually had a chance to do a keynote with Maria from Sesame street, which was pretty cool. You know what I mean? To meet her. But when I went out there, they had this big bulletin board in the middle of the convention center. And I saw my picture on there and said, oh my God, that's incredible <laughs> these people to be as a parent. Because all I felt was I was just a parent. You know, I didn't look at it like anything special that all these people want to come here, that guy, you know? And, um, but what you're going to hear in my presentation today is just as much as I have the love for delivering that presentation is the same love I have for us being the best parents that we can possibly be. And if you don't get anything on my presentation, hear my heart for this subject because I believe that parenting is an X factor and a game changer in our children's lives. I believe that with all my heart and I'm, I'm, I'm never going to in any way, um, you know, discount how powerful it is. And um, Eric, I probably should have made you the co-host so because with people coming in and like you, so you can maybe, if we pause for a moment, I'm gonna make Eric the co-host because I think we're gonna have more people coming in and I wanna keep pausing. Eric, is that okay? Cause they're coming in, man. That's a lot of people come in. So I'm gonna pause for a second, everyone. And um, let me see here. I'm gonna come out of here. I'm gonna go into um, some like somebody right now is in the room. Um, Eric, let me see, participants. Why, why can't I get you here, Eric? I don't know what it is. All right, let me see. Okay, there you go. Okay, and um, I'm gonna make you the co-host. All right. All right. Just did that, sent it over to you. So if, as people show up, because I think more people will be showing up later, you know, so right. sure. you got it, my man? Thank you. Yes. All right, appreciate it. All right, so I see some familiar names popping back in there. Good to see Rebecca and all. So good to see so many of you who've been here before. And so, so again, our topic is today is helping our children gain emotional control. And I just want to start by saying, how many of y'all know that every now and then, our kids need some emotional control. <laughs> Can I get a thumbs up or an emoji or, you know, every now and then. 
And I would also dare say we parents need it too, <laughs> because, you know, I'm a parent like everybody else. And people have heard a lot of good about my kids, but my kids are kids like everybody else's. <laughs> and the reality is sometimes my kids, like, you know, my grandmother used to say it like this, uh, you're getting on my last nerve. Now, I don't know if there's a such thing as the last nerve, <laughs> but yeah, Rebecca, right. But it seems like we were always like on that last nerve, you know, and I remember one time I said there, we call my grandmother's 95 years old. She's the most amazing woman. And I remember saying to her, I said, Nana, is there another nerve after that one? <laughs> she said, boy, shut up. <laughs> and, you know, cause I said, it's like we always close to that last one. She said, you always in the one in the family that got something to say. <laughs> And uh, but anyway, we, we have the best relay. I talked to her every other day. Greatest relationship with my grandmother. She's phenomenal. So um, thank goodness for good people who care, care about you. And so we're going to talk about this. We're going to get some strategies. Please have a notepad and, and something prepared um, to take notes because this is going to be a lot of good information. OK, and we don't want to miss out on this, but I will I would suggest this. <clears throat> don't what we're going to share. Don't try to do it all because it's a lot, okay? It's a lot. So don't, 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 you know, don't try to, you know, uh, <laughs> Kathy, why did you have to put that? <laughs> I'm trying to do a presentation. You got me laughing. <laughs> don't let your mouth run a check that your butt can't catch. <laughs> I've heard that quite a few times. All right, I got to move on. <laughs> you are absolutely right. We've definitely heard that one. All right. And so, um, so helping our children gain emotional control. So one, as you know, for some of you are new here again, we have two more months of this. And I, I tell you, it's been, to me, it's been a wonderful experience, you know, just sharing this information. I feel honored. I don't know where we're going to go with this afterwards, but I just, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a loving dad. I'm a loving father. I've been married 27 years. I, I just love talking about this. So I just hope that during our time together that we can empower a lot of you to get some skill sets and insights that can be helpful to you and your children. But we're, you know, we're going to keep building on it. This month we're doing this one. Next month we'll do another one. I would highly encourage you, and I'm really going to just put out a, put out a, um, just a, a possibility. I would love for you to stay with us to the end. You know what I mean? Just like say, hey, you know what? I'm going to stay with this to the end. We only got two more months, 1.5 hours per session. That's it. Because everything we share is going to be so powerful when it comes to engaging our kids. So just put it on your calendar. I'm going to give you the dates for next month and um it's saying my internet connection is unstable so if you lose me i will pop back on <laughs> i am in a hotel room right now so i hope you don't lose me um that that's you know hopefully that won't be the case so um so make sure that we um you know stay the course and, and, and gain some new insights and things of that nature so we're going to help our children gain emotional control today and and again please feel free to share your thoughts in the chat feature because this is this is you are all great parents and grandparents and across the board, you have wisdom just like I do. I am not the sage on the stage. I'm just going to be sharing some information that we're going to learn and grow together. Okay. And if anyone needs any interpretation, we got Lordy's on here. You can wave your hand and, and go run over there with her. Does it send your, your in a bar where you can put which group you want to run with and she'll repeat things that I'm saying. And so she's been a, a valuable contributor to what we're doing. So I just like to know a little bit about your kids. So please type your kids' grades and ages. And if you have something proud this, that you want to share about them, just go ahead in the chat feature and just type it into the chat feature. All right. Tell us their names, their ages, if it's your kids, your grandkids, and something that you're proud of. Okay. So go ahead, just in the chat feature, take a moment so we can get to know who your kids are and what you're proud of. And, and um, and as parents, we need to think about that every now and then. You know, we're proud of our kids. And, you know, sometimes they can drive us a little crazy, but we're just, okay, Austin, Kyle, 15, and Kyle, 17, and Kyle, 15. Okay, very good, Captain. All right. Come on, everyone, just chop in. You know, and then and if you don't put all your, because you because you may have eight kids and you won't put them all in. <laughs> you put a few in, you know, okay, all right. We got kindergarten, six-year-old. Okay, good. Great big sister to our son. I love that. That's phenomenal. But and sisters have a way of doing it. There's something special when it comes to their younger siblings. Are we, Ryland, okay, is 10. She's a reasonably responsible 10-year-old. Brianna, okay. High sense of integrity. Amani, in the grade 14, she thinks outside the box. Oh, wow, that's good. All right, Jack is eight and incredibly caring. 
That's wonderful. Yeah. Naya, 15, awesome person, well-rounded and dedicated. Very good. I love that. Love how you as parents see the, the beauty of your children. Uh, Kayla, 16, Nyla, 11. Uh, they are independent and responsible. Marissa Anderson, 14. She is a wonderful young lady who enjoys music. Very good. Very good. I'm loving this, man. This is really, really good. Thank you all for sharing that. It's just so good to see, um, you know, parents who love their kids. Now, I'm going to start off with an emotional intelligence key right now that I think we all need to really seriously think about. Ethan, okay, very good. Ethan, thank you, uh, uh, in, in the fifth, fifth grade. It didn't, you know, and, and this is important. And Layla, six independent. Okay, good. And that is, we we need to. Not, matter of fact, I'm not going to share it now. There's a part of my presentation I want to share. So I'm, I'm I'm sharing that a little too early. So I'll share it in a little bit. Okay. Um, I love this quote, and it's an interesting quote. And um, and I would love to get your feedback after I just quote share this. But that is, we might be the masters of our own thoughts, but we are. We, but we are, are but, but still we are the slaves of our own emotions. Let me say it again. We might be the master of our own thoughts. Still, we are the slaves of our own emotions. Somebody tell me what that, what is that? What is that? What, 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 um, when you hear that, what are you seeing? What are you thinking? Like, what is, what's, what's running through your mind when you see that quote? And you can type it in the chat feature. Like, what does that quote mean to you? And I'm going to explain it in a moment. But what does it mean? Like, again, you can go down at the bottom and chat and type in your thoughts. But we might be the master of our own thoughts, but we are still the slaves of our own emotions. I would love your feedback on that. Think about it. Think about what we're trying to say. Yeah, controlling our behavior. Yeah, okay. All right. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts on it? What does that mean? And so here's what I want to say about this quote, okay? And there's a reason why I put it in here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Tyann, you, you're right there. We often let our emotions get the best of us. There you go. Gatson, there you go. We tend to allow our emotions to drive us uh, in, instead of thinking first. Yes. And what, both of you, great responses. Let me tell you why, okay? Unexpressed thought, yeah. Uh, yeah, because we have a tendency because you got to keep in mind emotions almost become over time a part of our psyche. Write that down because I want you to see this, hear this and remember it. Emotions become a part of our psyche, which means that we become so used to responding in an emotional format that we consider it normal. The way we respond. And, and what typically happens, uh, parents, is people start to uh, categorize us by our emotional responses. So if you got a friend that's a little argumentative, oh, that's just Sally. <laughs> it's how she does things. Or if somebody is like emotionally jovial, you know, could it be the other side? Oh, that's, that's Fred. He's the happiest person you ever want to see, you know. And so what do we do? You know, Sally's the mean one, but that's the happy one, you know? And it's just because we, we, we just operate a certain way so much that it be, we become defined by it. And what you're going to learn today is going to be different. That's why I want to take my time. I'm not going to rush through this. What we're going to learn today is that that definition is not always accurate. What that definition has become has become something because we have not learned that we have this thing called emotional intellect. Most people have never been taught this. How many of you have ever heard of emotional intelligence? Like type yes, no, or thumbs up. If you've heard of it, go type, your, give me a thumbs up. Yeah, yeah, we, we've heard of it. You know what I mean? Some of us have, you know, have heard of it. Yes, okay. Uh, okay, Laura, okay, good. Good, Loretta, thank you, yep. And so we know it's we know about it, but what I'm going to share with you today is we know it, but just like an athlete in training, we got to work at it. We have got to work at it. Thank you, Marie. Good. Yeah. So a lot of you have heard of it before. So what I'm going to be doing is sort of bifurcated using a high end term. <laughs> it's going to be both for the go this way for the parents, that way for the kids because they're both is gonna be beneficial, but the, ultimately we wanna confluence, we come together 
into one 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 form of one uh, flow in which we can take these emotional insights and be better at our communications, help our kids be better at their response to situations and across the board. So, <clears throat> so even though this is a pretty interesting quote, when we're gonna, when we, when we get done today and with further application over time, we'll, I'm gonna tell you, we're gonna definitely not be the slaves of our emotions, but we gotta work at it. We're gonna be able to tell our emotions how we want them to respond, okay? Not them telling us how they want us to. <laughs> Two different scenarios, okay? So today, this book, write it down. If you have not read it, make it your next read. Because what this man wrote is a game changer. It's even one of those books that you may want to sit down and read with your kids. Now, I haven't done that myself, but I think I'm going to make that a priority. Because kids really need to master these skills. <laughs> they live in a world of heightened emotionalism. I mean, people, everything's emotional now. You know, everybody around them is emotional. Social media is emotional. Celebrities are emotional. Politicians are emotional. Reality shows thrive on emotions. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thumbs up if you know what I mean. Like you could go down the emojis. You know exactly what I'm talking about. It's who you can bash the most. <laughs> <laughs> who's the most aggressive? Who's the most in your face? You see? And so <laughs> I was telling the group yesterday, it was kind of funny. I said, because uh, I talk a lot about character and integrity when I'm speaking to young people and I get them motivated around this and I get them inspired and, and sometimes in big audiences and they like, man, they get. And so one young man in one of the audiences, here's this little guy, this funny little guy, he put his hands up. He said, Mr. Andrews, he said, I really appreciate how excited you are getting us about emotions. He said, but Mr. Andrews, could you please teach adults this? <laughs> he said, because when I see politicians and when I see celebrities, none of them have emotions, no control. <laughs> but they expect us kids to. And that little boy, I said, you, you know, you're way beyond your years, man. You shouldn't be. <laughs> I said, that's pretty, that's pretty neat for someone so young. So, so the reality is we adults, should be the example and role models, hopefully, to our kids. So we're going to talk about emotional needs, all people. We're going to talk about emotional intel intelligence and understanding a little more. Then we're going to talk about a word I want you to circle that's called self-regulation. Boy, this is going to be major right here. And then we're going to talk about parent-to-parent -parent motivation time. Self-regulation is, you'll see in a moment, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So let me start with this quote, though. And this is a quote by, um, this is a quote by Mahatma Gandhi, who was, as we know, one of the leaders in the, uh, back in many, many years ago to try to help people in India. And what he said was powerful. And I'm, I'm gonna tie it together. I'm gonna read the quote, but then I'm gonna tie it together. And I really want you to connect to what I'm about to share here. It says, keep your thoughts positive because your thoughts become your words. Keep your words positive because your words become your behavior. Keep your behavior positive because your behavior becomes your habits. Keep your habits positive because your habits become your values. Look at this. Keep your values positive because your values become your destiny. How powerful a quote is that? Now, I'm gonna give you something that's gonna take it to a whole nother level. You ready for this? And this is something I want you to write down when I'm done. Take the first statement in this quote. Keep your thought positive because your thoughts becomes your words. Listen to this and write this down because it's important. Your words, go down to the last one, become your destiny. Your words become your destiny. So it's really important to be careful of the words we use, in particular as parents. Remember, I was joking about my mom and I said, she would say, boy, one day you're going to use that mouth to make a difference. <laughs> and I would hear that all the time. Now, I know she had other things she wanted to say. <laughs> I know, I know in the back of her mind, she had some other thoughts because I was one of those mouthy talk back. Anybody got any kids to talk back? Come on, let's come clean. I'll put my hand up. Come on, don't make me seem like I'm the only one that love to talk back, got something to say, clean up your room. Why? <laughs> 
Like, because I told you to. Okay. <laughs> like, then you say it to one other kid and they're like, okay, I got it. They go clean the room up. They don't even say anything. But you got that one sitting over there. They're like, I got homework to do. <laughs> okay. This is like night number five that you had homework. Have you ever gotten that homework done yet? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Chantel, they want to add that last word. <laughs> yep. We all got them. We all got them. You know, so we we're so tempted to want to just, yeah, I'm, I'm about to, you know, yeah. <laughs> and then you start realizing I can't say what I'm really thinking. <laughs> all right. Because we don't want to break their spirits. We don't want to, we don't want to tear them down. You know, there are kids and they're young and they don't have the emotional understanding we do. So we have to find other ways to communicate, you know what I mean, um, what we're trying to say in a way that's going to build them up. My son recently, uh, when he was in college, about a year and a half ago, he called me and he said something. And you all have, I'm sure you've all had these moments too, but he called me and he, because he's grown up now and he's starting to realize some of those things I told him years ago made a lot of sense, you know, and uh, he called me and he said, dad, I just want to call and thank you. I said, what do you call me? Thank me for you know what I mean? And he said, no, really. He said, I, I'm starting to understand fully what you mean. And he said, I see a lot of kids down here that don't have that kind of support. And I just want to let you know, I know I really understand the who, what I have in the gift that I was given in the father. Oh man, that's the kind of stuff you just like, oh, you know, you're just done. And, you know, and so to me, that was a reward, you know, for just being there for him and encouraging him to maximize his potential. And he's, his thing is, career-wise is an art and, and, and getting behind him for his dream. But I've always used words and did my best to use words to uplift my kids. Did I slip every now and then? And a few things came out that shouldn't have? Yep, because I'm human. But I'm very cognizant of the fact that words have power. They really do. But not all emotions are bad emotions. In your chat feature, tell me, what are some good emotions? Talk to me about what are good emotions, all right? I have, I'll, explain, I'll share some with you, but I would love to hear from you. What are some good emotions? Type it right in the chat feature. All right. What are good? Because my emotions aren't bad emotions. You know what I mean? Joy. Come on, Joe. There you go. Yep. Joy. Excitement. That's it, Loretta. Very good. Excitement is good. Love, peace, happiness, peace. There you go. Empathy. That's right. Hope. That's it, Loretta. The good emotions, you know? So emotions aren't a bad thing. You know what I mean? It's like we a lot of times we hear emotions and we think it's all yeah, dedication. That's it, Kathy. Yep. You know, it's not all it's not all bad. You know, in many cases, it's good. It, they're good emotions. Thank you all for, for participating and sharing that. You know, and um, and so with that being said, I want us to do something. You know what I mean? It could be pot, you know, positive emotions, or it could be. Like we said, uh, 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 you know, what well, could be negative emotions that can be that, you know, challenging for them. I shouldn't say negative, but challenging emotions, where it's, you know, attitude, anger, things like that, or um, it could be positive. But I want you to take about three or four minutes and maybe you don't have to do all your kids, but maybe think of a, a child you have and ask them, what do they, um, when, from an emotional standpoint, what, what do they typically display when it comes to emotions? Again, it could be something positive or it could be something challenging because we're here to grow together. So, you know, it could be challenging. And actually, and then answer the question, why do you think they respond that way emotionally? Whatever it may be. If it's positive, where they're empathetic or something like that, or if it's negative, not I hate saying negative. Um, if it's challenging, where they may have, you know, really get upset when things are said to them, why do you think they do that? So let's take, I'm gonna pause for a moment. You won't hear my voice for about three minutes. And I want you to write it down, or if you feel comfortable, type in the chat feature. Maybe and again, it doesn't have to be all your kids, but maybe one, one or one of them or two of them, what the emotion is and why do you think it is? All right. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. OK. OK. All right. So go ahead. So about about three minutes.
about another minute or so, and we're gonna dive right back on in. Yeah. Hmm. That's good. Yep. Yeah. Thank you for sharing some of this. I'm seeing some of this in the chat feature. Good. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Very good. All right, so I'm going to ask, ask, and this gets this is optional, of course. You know, we don't expect anyone to come off of the video or come off, of, you know, and share. But does anyone feel comfortable sharing their thoughts? Whether you can come off a of mute, unmute yourself, and just kind of share um, your thoughts. If not, we'll just kind of roll with the ones that's in the chat feature. Does anybody feel com you know compelled to, um, you know, share some thoughts? I mean, I, what gonna, thoughts specifically are you looking well, for or what topic? For, just, on the just, just, just what we're talking about right now, your child, you know, just telling us the, like well, what your child has, what they're dealing with and how is it, how they're handling it, you know? So it's just that, it's just that, like what you would type into the chat feature. So, yeah. Well, I put in the chat feature, I have a son with Asperger's, so it's challenging to know what he's feeling or thinking because he's stoic and reveals nothing. Yeah, yeah. And see, and obviously, you know, and I know that that's a totally different scenario. You know what I mean? That's more, you know, because of the condition. You know what I mean? I, and I've interacted with a lot of young people with Asperger's, so I get it, you know. And um, and so um, as a parent, I'm sure you're getting some type of support. Am I correct with that? Just to, you know, did, did, with your son? Some, 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 yeah, that's good. Yeah. Because I know there's a lot of great supports, even in our state, you know what I mean, for, um, for helping with that, you know. But let me ask just just like Anita though, because Anita commented about um, one child will let negative comments roll off, the other one will internalize them. Yeah. I have two that that, that are complete opposites. Yeah. So my second yeah. one doesn't have Asperger's. He's not on the spectrum at all. But like like Anita was saying, that second one of mine will internalize. Yep. Comments too. Yeah. You you know what's interesting, and thank you, Kathy. What's interesting about that too is. And this is really, I call this good parenting, is recognizing that. Because with parents, sometimes we, and I, I don't know, I grew up in a general, and I had great people around me, but it was kind of like a one, you know, uh, when you parented, you parented, you know, with each child, like looking at them collectively, not individually. And, 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 and I think now we, we, the, the healthier mode of parenting is looking at the differences in our children and, and addressing them based upon their differences. You know what I mean? So Kathy, that was really good. Thank you so much for sharing. I mean, you know, Tyana Ty is saying my oldest daughter is depressed and frustrated because of lack of peer connection. That's hard right now. And I really feel for your daughter. And this is all this COVID stuff. You know what I mean? This, you know, it's been well documented that this year has been a tough year psychologically on a lot of people. I know for me, it was tough. I and mean, you would read it, you know, you can go to your emojis and give me a thumb up. Don't think, make it like I'm the only one. <laughs> I, I had a tough time. I mean, I remember the first four or five months of this, I thought I was losing my mind. I really did. Coach I'm, D? Yeah. My, my concern, exactly what you were saying, um, yeah. someone else had put, um, a, Ty, Tyann said she's a freshman also. Yeah. I'm worried that this COVID is setting my freshmen down a path because, you know, yeah. b before COVID, yeah. Love to love going to school, talk yep. to a lot of people at school. Now yep. mm -hmm. we're on a hybrid. He doesn't even want to go in. It's like yeah. he, and his grades have dropped. Yeah. That, so that's it's a, like the COVID has pushed him down a path. I don't want him to go. Oh my goodness, Kathy, let me tell you something. You're not alone. And I want to change it. Yeah, when you're not alone. And the only thing I can say, and again, I I'm not, not if any other parent feels compelled to share, please do. Because I don't want to seem like, again, I'm the sage on the stage. But what I have had to do, Kathy, is I have to spend a lot of time talking to my kids. I have to, and more and more listening to them. You know what I mean? Like, just sitting down and, you know, small talk. Like, my son, like, what I do is, I, our children, especially with during COVID, their rooms have become a safe space for them. You know what I mean? So they have their rooms. And so I go in my son's room and I sit on the floor. You know what I mean? And just talk to him. You know what I mean? What's going on? I don't, like, let's go to the living room or anywhere just like right in his space now at first it was uncomfortable for him because you know parent being in there is like <laughs> you're, in my, you're like in my space you know but now it's kind of cool my wife does the same thing so our kids during this crisis parents need our attention more than ever we don't want to overwhelm them 
And, you know, we don't want to ask them all the time, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Because that'll drive them crazy too. But we need to read those cues like you're reading right now, Kathy. You're reading, you know what I mean? You're reading those cues and you're noticing it. And um, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, I own your space kid. <laughs> tell my 17 year old that you come to my house and help me out because <laughs> he thinks that's his space. So yeah, yeah, yes. And, and Anita was saying um, uh, that so true. Yeah, Armani is more emotional since COVID and she actually took a depression test online. Yeah, the, it's, it's, it's telling us, that's why we, you know, and Eric, you know, is here and I would love to maybe even have him chime in. That's why we did this. You know what I mean? That's why we realized that we originally started this. We all going through this stuff. You know what I mean? When you agree, Eric, if you're there, I think you're there with us, man. But that Absolutely. Was, yeah, that was our goal, man, wasn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. what we wanted to provide, obviously, we wanted to provide a few strategies, but we wanted to be able to come together and motivate each other and share yeah. our own stories. Yeah. You know, it's so, so that, you know, we recognize that we're not the only one that's going through something. Yeah. And we can, yeah. we can help build each other up. So yeah uh, that definitely was the purpose and we mm -hmm. feel like uh you know we, we've been able to do that so yeah we've definitely been on board with it but I, i'll be honest with you i think this has been the best one as far as us talking about it. you know what i mean i think we've had conversations in the past but this one you know and I, kathy kind of got the ball rolling but i, I think it's a uh, it, we're, we're kind of diving into it a little deeper keep in mind this content i'm going to get to it but this is what's important right here you know what i mean what we're doing right here encouraging each other during these times is important so, you know, and all of you put, a lot of you puts, uh, puts your thoughts in here and, you know, um, Loretta said, I have a daughter that gets frustrated easily, especially with her younger sister. She's one of five. I think she struggles with getting attention. That it, you're going to see that in just a few moments, what that's all about, because we have some information in this presentation about why some kids are operating in that mode. But again, none of you are alone with this because we all experience it. What's beautiful about this forum that's why we always want to have this as we want this to be a success because parents don't get a chance to do this this often. We we typically are alone, you know what I mean, and trying to figure it out. So we're saying, hey, once a month, let's get together and just talk it out. <laughs> you know, see what's even if anything, if it's just to talk it out, you know, it, it helps to communicate and even type it in the chat feature. Would y'all agree? Just like those of you who follow me, would you agree with that? I mean, it's just nice, you know what I mean? I would I would say you're exactly right. If you think you're the only one, it seems mm -hmm. like a bigger problem. But when you see other people with the same issues, like mm -hmm. people have made comments on here that I would completely agree with from my kids. Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not the only one experiencing this craziness. No, no, we're not. You're not the only one. You're, you're not the only one. And so it's just really important for us to understand, you know, that we're not alone and uh, how important it is for us to work, you know, together collectively. So let's go back into the content and, you know, um, and that is, you know, unless a unless a, uh, um, a, a, a it's a positive emotion, never label your children by their emotional response. Just keep that in mind, okay? Never label your children by their emotional response. And what I mean by that is, like, don't 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 label your child, you know, um, by if they have a bad attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah, and like in, in Gatson, I just I think that's the last thing. But it's nice to have a platform like this so you don't feel alone. That's it. But don't, don't, don't label them by that. Like I was sharing a story yesterday how my cousin has a daughter, and we spent time with the daughter, and had the daughter over our home for a while. She lives in Syracuse, New York, and we live on here in Delaware. And so we 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 um we had her come to our home, and she didn't do well. She was there for like a day, and she was so emotionally charged and crying and things like that. We had to take her back to Syracuse. And the moment she got out of the car, she went in her house, she was smiling, she was happy, my, my cousin's home. And, 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 and immediately my cousin said, that's my shy child. <laughs> that's my shy child. And I said to my cousin, don't ever call her that. I said, because she's doing her best to live up to it. You know what I mean? Even her brothers and sisters say, yeah, that's my shy sister. And I said, see, what you're doing is stereotyping this young lady by her disposition, and she's taking ownership of it. And my cousin thanked me. She wasn't happy about it, but she thanked me for that information. I said, well, that's why I do it. That's who I am. So there are all kinds of emotions. Emotional control does not mean that we don't show emotion. 
we don't want to be emotionless. You know what I mean? Look at me, like my, my presentation style, as you can see, I should use my hands, even though we're virtual. I feel like I'm on the stage in front of a bunch of people, you know, because that's, I show emotion and even in my presentation. So not everybody does that, but that's my presentation style. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you're right. It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. So, um, so emotional control does not mean when to show emotion. I'm, I'm sure if you think about your kids, you've probably seen all these faces, correct? <laughs> all these look, look at the little, little, little person down there with the dad, you know, like not feeling it right now. And I think we've all seen that uh, in, in uh, our children one way or the other. That guy with his mouth, mouth wide open is truly, in our terminology, we call that a meltdown. <laughs> That's a full blown meltdown. And we've all seen that in our kids. You know, sometimes it could be in the mall when they're little, or sometimes it could be, you know, over a friend's house, or because sometimes it could be spontaneous anywhere. They just burst out, especially the little ones, because they don't have a lot of emotional control when they're young, you know? And so anyway, um, so there's all kinds of emotions. But this is what I want you to get and screenshot this, because this is really important to understand. Most of you, if you're like me, you learned about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, okay, uh, in school. And so, um, but it, 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 it has more merit today, I think, than ever because of COVID. So let's look at a lot, a lot of these, you know, you got your physiological, you know what I mean? Um, which is food and the need for food, water, and rest. You got your safety, which is a need for security. You have luck. Uh, need of love and belonging. That goes back to what someone had said about attention. Some people need more attention because they need just a little bit more because of their personality style. Sometimes they just need it a little bit more. My son, okay, now this, and this is interesting. Like my son, he's 17. He'll, he'll take a hundred hugs a day. You know, we walk past each other in the house. He gonna hug you. We just turn around, we hug each other. My daughter, I'll hug her once. She said, that's good enough. <laughs> My 19 year old, she said, dad, I don't like hugging all the time. You know, cause I'm, I'm naturally a hugger. That's the way I'm wired, right? But she, she give her one hug, she good. She said, matter of fact, that hug can last me like two or three days. We'll catch up three days from now, <laughs> you know? Now when she's on the college campus, when I go to visit, I hug her all the time around her friends and she loves it. But, but she's not, she's not, you know, this is not her. But for Alex, my son, that means a lot to him. He and I are kind of wired, you know what I mean? Um, I, I wired a lot, a lot, a lot of life. And then esteem, intimate, you know, feeling of accomplishment. That's why like in school, sometimes it's hard for kids because they may feel like some other kids are more accomplished than they are. So now they have to come on with this feelings, feelings of, of feeling empty. And, and what I try to share with them, not, you know, not just my kids, because I work with a lot of kids is, listen, don't get caught up in all of the exploits of an individual that's good on the basketball team or good on, you know, gymnastics or good at, because you're good at something too. And what you're good at, they may not be good at that. So everybody's good at something. It's just that theirs is more visible, you know? And, um, and so we, we as parents want to uh, give our children a sense of esteem for what they have to offer, you know what I mean? Be it compassion or care for people or if they volunteer, it doesn't always have to be the things they see in their school with kids who are, you know, head of the debate team and all that kind of stuff. All of our kids have some type of talent and skills. And we just want to encourage them around that. And we want to surround them with people who can encourage them around their, their, their having that sense of feeling of accomplishment. And in self-actualization, achieving one's full potential. Um, one of the things I hear a lot of young people say when I do assemblies, because I'm around a lot of kids, I'm flying to Texas and I'm doing a series of them. And tomorrow I'm speaking to 800 kids <laughs> virtually in Oregon. You know, so I'm around a lot of young people, but a lot of times they'll say things like they don't know what they want to do with their lives. They feel a sense of, you know, and I'll say, well, the big thing you want to do right now is just be young and enjoy life. And it said, it'll all come for you over time. But it goes to show that this Maslow's, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs is important because the reality is they, we all have this thing of what well, we need these five you know different types of uh, characteristics that he's talking about. So I would sneak screenshot that if I were you and, and, and keep that in mind as you're interacting. You know because with kids they have this needed sense of belonging, they have a sense of security, 
rest and comfort, and most importantly, relationships, okay? And keep this in mind, please. No two kids are the same. Yeah, no two kids are the same. So we have to understand that what one kid needs for them may not be what the other kid needs. You know what I mean? And so trying to understand the differences helps. But let's back to the message at hand here. Belonging, these are just emotional needs. So when we think about emotional responses, a lot of times it can come from a dearth of some of this. Like I don't have good relationships or I'm not rested. You know, research has shown that kids that go to school that are, that are undernourished and not rested, they academically, you know, kind of do worse because they don't have the, the, the physiological tools to be academically solid. So that's why we have to tell our kids to go to bed, get some rest. You know what I mean? You can't be staying up to one o'clock in the morning. You got to go to bed. And so you get up in the morning and you can do your education and schooling on a, on a real right frame of mind. If not, you're going to be kind of out of it a little bit. Okay. So, you know, that's, these are all important things. So, so emotional intelligence, let's talk about this is a high level mode of critical thinking. We must understand it first before we can help our kids. So I wanted to teach this to parents because it's important for us as parents to understand that if we can understand this, and my, my goal tonight, I'm not trying to make you EI geniuses. I wanna give you enough information that as you gather this information and internalize it, you'll be able to be able to be more effective in communicating it to your children. And then what you're gonna find for you is gonna be helpful for you on a personal level. It'll be helpful for you at work. It'll be helpful for you in relationships with other people. Because keep in mind, just like you have intelligence quotient, IQ, you have EQ, which is emotional quotient. Same thing, but intellect in the emotional realm. The two big ones I want you to get out of this chart are self-awareness and self-management. Write those two down, please. Self-awareness and self-management. Like I said, most of us have never been taught this stuff. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that I was, okay? And, and now I'm sharing it with you, all right? And Dr. Daniel Goldman is the genius behind all of this. So let's take a look at some of this. So self-awareness, all right, is critical to emotional quotient success. It is the realization that my emotional response is either proactive or reactive. Write that down because it's important. My emotional response is either proactive or reactive. This is really of importance right here. Emotionally charged youth and adults are reactive. That's why we see kids go into temp temp temper tantrums. That's why we see folks have you know, arguments and things of that nature. No thinking out the situation, just fully engaged with emotions, fully engaged. So EQ is trying to get us to a point where we can have some sense of intelligence emotionally so that won't always be our response. Now with we adults, I think we can work at it and enhance it a little easier because we have the maturity. But with kids, it takes a little bit longer, all right? And so self-management is the key. Self-management is the key to EQ success. If not, we typically respond emotionally in the way we have always responded. So if I'm argumentative to people, I've all, that's how I communicate. If I'm disrespectful to people, I'm not even concerned about the way I say things and its impact on another person. I just feel like saying it. And not realizing that my words could be damaging to somebody else. Not even concerned about it. Just say it because I feel like it. And we don't realize every time we say something, it has an effect. It's called encoding and decoding. We decode, encode and people decode, and they're going to get something from what we're saying. So self-management is a high level of emotional intelligence that says, I'm going to be a little bit more aware of what I say and its impacts on others. We're going to talk about that in just a few moments. And then self-regulation is the glue that keeps it all together. I'm not going to spend much time on that now because we're going to give that quality time in just a few moments, okay? And so this chart, take a picture of this, because this will help you at home, but it'll also help you 
in work, in any other place you're involved with, church, it don't matter. This chart is the chart because it really breaks down these five critical components of emotional intelligence. Okay. And like I said, self awareness and self regulation are two big ones for us. All right. So self awareness that's the ability to recognize and understand. Listen to this. Like I said, if you don't screenshot it, write it down because this right here is powerful. The ability to recognize and understand your moods emotions and drives as well as their effect on others y'all got that that's 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 important from an emotional intelligence standpoint the ability to recognize and understand your moods emotions and drives as well as their effect on others okay now i'm going to come clean all right because and i'm going to come off the screen share so i can come clean because I think it's important for us to understand just because somebody's delivering something doesn't mean, you know, that they're not, they have, don't have challenges as well. Okay. And I wish I could see more of your beautiful faces. Y'all like all got your screens. Y'all sitting behind us. <laughs> well, Kathy's with me. <laughs> okay. Hey, Kathy, you rolling with me, but and the rest of everybody else is too. And so, um, and so, you know, we were having some challenges with one of my sons. All right. And I'm not going to go into the details, but we're having some challenges. And as a result of the challenges, we had to go through some counseling. I always tell people counseling is actually, I'm finding counseling is a pretty good thing. You know what I mean? Because it, it helps you to become aware of some of the things where you're shortcomings. Because I'm thinking, I'm teaching you all this, but I'm thinking I know certain things, I'm doing certain things right. And then what came through the counseling was he was receiving the delivery of certain things in a different manner. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, but the way he is receiving it, he saw it as wrong. And so through this process, we came to realize I was communicating and he was receiving the communications in a certain way based upon how he's wired. So in my way of thinking, I thought that I was doing okay. I'm this super dad, I'm a caring, super loving, Superman dad of the year. <laughs> I'm there for my son. I stay, you know, the course. I'm with my wife. We've been married 27 years. You have a dad and, you know, I'm Superman. And he like, uh-uh. <laughs> Anybody can relate to that? Come on now, don't leave me hanging out here. Anybody, come on, give me a thumbs up or emoji or do something. You know, here I am thinking, man, you know, I stayed there with my kids and I'm providing for them and put them in a home and, you know, they live in a pretty good quality of life. You see what I'm saying? Chantel, I like your smile because I feel like you're smiling at me. <laughs> you're not communicating. I don't see your community, but your, your picture's there. And that's a thank you. I appreciate your smile on that picture. But can somebody talk, talk to me. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Thank you. Y'all you get it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I'm getting people. In and so the point I'm making is, when you talk about self-awareness, remember self-awareness. Let's go back to that, that graph. Think, and that's, I shared that to make a point. And I put, use myself as an example. The ability to recognize and understand your moods, emotions, and drives, as well as their effect on others. I didn't recognize my effect of where I was doing things on my son. And so I had to come back and ask him, First of all, for apologize to him and then say, help me get better at this. Because I thought that I was doing things the right way. And obviously I was not. Let me tell you something. He still has a little bit of some emotional things going on every now and then, but this kid and I have the best relationship. We do. Because now I know my approach to him can't be the same approach I have to my daughter or my older son or my younger because he's different. That's self-awareness, you see? And that's something we have to constantly work on. In self-regulation, okay, this one here is huge. This will help a lot of people even in the workplace, all right? Yeah, you see, in the workplace. And that is the ability to control or redirect disruptive impulses and moods 
the second part, write down. You don't have to worry about this first part, but the second part, write this down. The propensity to suspend judgment, to think before acting. Write that down, please. Self-regulation. We're going to talk about that in a moment. That's critical because the worst thing we can do in an emotional situation is respond. <laughs> Because 99% of the times, especially if it's an